So, when it comes to studio monitors, I've always had a few questions and a slight few doubts. And I know that a lot of you guys have those same questions asking whether or not these studio monitors are the one you should go for, which size you should go for. Does having 8-inch studio monitors mean that's the best of the best and that's what you should be targeting? And in today's video, I just want to cover the sizes of different studio monitors, which ones you should go for in terms of your specific room, and also the things you need to look out for to really get the most out of your studio monitors and at the end of the day hopefully get you the perfect pair for your home studio setup so hey guys welcome back to another video and if you're new here my name is edward smith and welcome to my youtube channel and like i mentioned in the beginning of this video we are going to be going through a few studio monitors to hopefully get you the perfect pair for your home studio setup just a few reminders before we get into things don't forget to smash that subscribe button down below and click on the thumbs up to really help out the channel and also the links of these studio monitors will be down in the description below if you want to end up getting yourself a pair of after watching this video but without any further ado let's jump into this video and see what these studio monitors are all about So before we jump into the specifics of these studio monitors, I first want to go through a few things that you need to make sure you've already covered before worrying about the studio monitors that you want to get. And one of the main things you need to look out for firstly is good acoustic treatment. A lot of you guys want to have good studio monitors of course, but without good acoustic treatment, they really aren't going to do the job you want them to do. So before you run off and get studio monitors, make sure you get some acoustic panels or get some sort of acoustic treatment in your room so that your studio monitors can give you that honest sound you're really looking for. The second thing you need to look out for before purchasing studio monitors is understanding your room size. This plays a very big part in picking the size studio monitor you want to go for because you don't want to have an 8 inch studio monitor in a very small room or a 5 inch studio monitor in a massive room. You want to really get that balance so you can really get the most out of your studio monitor and get a studio monitor that fits your room a lot better. The third thing you need to focus on when getting yourself a pair of studio monitors is actually just figuring out what you're going to be using them for. You don't want to be purchasing a pair of studio monitors if you're going to be in the gaming and streaming world and in an office type setup because honestly it's just unnecessary. If you're more on the content creation side and music production, mixing and mastering where sound is really important, then you get yourself a decent pair of studio monitors. But for gaming, desktop speakers are just fine. And and the last thing you need to know when it comes to picking a pair of studio monitors is that whichever pair you go for, it all depends on you understanding your studio monitors. When it comes to music production, mixing and mastering, you really have to train your ear to hear certain frequencies, to understand the sound of your studio monitors so that when you export your songs and put them on all these platforms, they sound good compared to the competition. If you have a cheap pair of studio monitors or the most expensive, it doesn't matter if you don't understand understand those speakers. You need to learn your speakers, you need to learn and train your ear and that's the best way to really get the best results. So now that we've covered all of that, let's jump into our first pair of studio monitor speakers, the PreSonus Eris E3.5s. <laughs> So when it comes to the PreSonus Eris E3.5s, these are better classified as multimedia speakers than that of studio monitors, mainly because they are designed for your home office or for gaming and these kind of situations rather than for music production, mixing and mastering. They do have a 3.5 inch cone, which is the smallest cone size you'd get in decent speakers building up to studio monitors. So they are nice for a small little office space or a small bedroom type setup. Where the you're gaming if you want to do music production you can they aren't made for that purpose but they are decent in terms of a starting out pair of speakers for whatever you're doing in terms of cost these will take you back around a hundred dollars they are in my opinion the best multimedia speaker option to go for in that price range because personally I like the all black with the blue cone design it just looks really really cool and in terms of connecting one studio monitor is the active studio monitor where the other one is passive so everything connects on 
one side and then just runs with one passive red and black cable to the other speaker the way standard multimedia speakers are set up like i said when it comes to a pair of multimedia speakers they aren't made for music production mixing or mastering they are mainly made for an office or for a gaming setup so if you are going to get a pair of these make sure you keep that in mind and also make sure that your room is not crazily big they are designed for a small space not for a very big room now the next pair of studio monitors that come in a five inch cone are these yamaha hs5s So when it comes to the Yamaha HS5s, these are some of the most popular studio monitors that you could go for in the market today. So many professionals use them, even though they are a lot cheaper than those professionals can afford, they still go with these because they sound fantastic when it comes to mixing and mastering and even music production. And honestly, for a small home studio setup, these are the ones you should go for. They are quite pricey at around $200 per monitor, so for a pair of these you can get four pairs of PreSonus Eris E3.5s but obviously they do cost a little bit more because there's a lot more that goes into making studio monitors like these give you that flat frequency response needed for music production and content creation than that of just a speaker setup for gaming. When it comes to connecting and setting up these studio monitors both of them are active, meaning that each studio monitor has its own power supply and they also don't have RCA connections, which means you're not going to just have an RCA to auxiliary that plugs right into your laptop. These are going to connect via XLR or TRS into an audio interface first and then go into your computer system. So they are more made for a home studio setup than just for general listening. So again, if you're someone in a small studio space, maybe a bedroom studio setup, and you want to get a quality pair of studio monitors, these are definitely an option to go for. So our next size upgrade from the Yamaha HS5s are a pair of 6.5 inch cone studio monitors and the ones that I've gone for are these Kali Audio LP6s. These studio monitors sound fantastic and in terms of their size I think they are ideal for any home studio setup. They're not too big like an 8 inch studio monitor that won't fit in a smallish room but they're also not too small that you're not going to get that low end and that better overall balance that you really want out of studio monitors and when it comes to these Kali Audio LP6s they are ridiculously popular they are a new entry into the market they've been around for two three years now and the reason they are so so popular is the fact that they only cost a hundred and fifty dollars per monitor if you purchase these as a pair they are a hundred dollars cheaper than the smaller Yamaha HS5s and overall in terms of sound they're probably going to do a better job one thing that also sets these 6.5 inch cone studio monitors monitors apart from the Yamaha HS5s is the way that they can be set up for your specific room. These studio monitors come with a whole bunch of pictures at the back and a switchboard where you can have a look at the pictures and set them up more specifically for your room environment which at the end of the day is what this video is all about. Getting the perfect pair and size studio monitors for your size room. And even though the Yamaha HS5s look better and have a better overall build quality, for the size and for the price, these are in my opinion the best studio monitors you can go for. And the final upgrade in terms of studio monitor size from the Kali Audio LP6s are these Yamaha HS8s. So, when it comes to the Yamaha HS8s, they are my absolute favorite pair of studio monitors, hence the reason I have them in my home studio setup. Coming with an 8 inch cone for that extra low end with great sounding mids and highs and overall they just sound really really good. Like I mentioned, I'm a big fan of the look and design of the Yamaha HS5s and these are the exact same, just slightly bigger. In terms of cost, these are quite pricey, they will take you back around $350 to $400. But if your room 
room is big enough and you have the budget, they're definitely a great option to go for. If you're on the other end and you're in a smaller space, they really aren't dedicated for small home studio setups because you aren't gonna get everything out of them that they have to offer and therefore you're just gonna be wasting your money. So rather get a smaller studio monitor like the Yamaha HS5s or the Kali Audio LP6s for a smaller setup and if you have the room space and the budget, these will be the best of the best to go for but make sure you tick those boxes first. So to conclude this video, when it comes to picking studio monitors, don't forget to get good acoustic treatment. Don't forget to understand your room and your room size so that you can pick the perfect size studio monitor for your space. Also figure out why you're gonna be using these, whether it is for gaming or streaming or music production. So you don't buy a proper pair of studio monitors for no reason. And then last but not least, make sure you train your ear to understand your studio monitors because at the end of the day, that's the only way you're gonna get the results you're looking for. Also, another reminder that the links of these studio monitors will be down in the description below. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you for another video next time.